the origins of haplogroup I1 begin around 27,500 years ago at the start of the last glacial maximum in Europe. It is at this moment in time that our pre-I1 forefathers would have started accumulating unique SMPs along their Y chromosomes that they would pass down generation after generation, millennia after millennia to their patrilineal descendants. After the last glacial maximum ended in Europe, our pre-I1 forefathers would have emerged from their refuge, most likely in southeastern Europe. They would have started traveling westward, south of the Alps, and at least one of these pre-I1 patrilineal lines would have entered the Iberian Peninsula. It is here in northeastern Spain at the site of Balma Guiana, where we find the oldest evidence for a pre haplogroup I1 patrilineal line. This ancient pre I1 sample is mentioned in the 2019 study Survival of Late Pleistocene Hunter Gatherer Ancestry in the Iberian Peninsula. The sample is labeled BAL0051 and dates to around 13,000 years ago. Our pre-I1 forefathers would continue on northwards through Europe with the Obercastle Cluster, also known as Western Hunter Gatherer. This genetic cluster formed most likely somewhere southwest of the Alps. Around 8,000 years after Mr. BAL 0051 lived, we find our most recent in time pre haplogroup I1 ancient DNA sample labeled OST 003, dating to around 5,200 years ago. He was discovered on the small island of Tannenwerder in Lake Ostdorf in the city of Schwerin, which is in northern Germany. The following map of northern Germany shows the location of the city of Schwerin where Mr. OST 003 was discovered. He was mentioned in the 2023 study, Paleogenomics of Upper Paleolithic to Neolithic European Hunter-Gatherers. There was an interesting quote from that study. Quote, the youngest individual carrying large portions of hunter-gatherer ancestry in the analyzed data set is from Ostdorf in northern Germany, dated to around 5.2 thousand years ago, with greater than 90% Obercastle cluster plus Seidelkino cluster components, end quote. Even though the funnel beaker farmers had introduced farming into that area of northern Germany around 800 years prior to when Mr. OST-003 lived, he and his people were able to maintain their fisher-hunter-gatherer lifestyle with little mixing with the surrounding farmers. During the third millennium BCE, the steppe-influenced corded ware culture was spread throughout northern Europe. It is during this time, around 4,600 years ago, that the last common patrilineal ancestor for haplogroup I1 would be born. I like to call him Mr. I1. Every man alive today that is positive for haplogroup I1 is a direct patrilineal descendant of this one amazing man. It's difficult to know just exactly where Mr. I1 was born around 4,600 years ago because haplogroup I1 does not show up in the archeological record until several centuries later. Perhaps the answer to this question can be found in a recently released preprint titled Step Ancestry in Western Eurasia and the Spread of the Germanic Languages. One of the most interesting findings from the preprint is that haplogroup I1 is associated with the East Scandinavian IBD cluster from Sweden. And this East Scandinavian cluster was spread westward and southward during the Bronze Age to the rest of Scandinavia. To quote the preprint, quote, large scale Bronze Age migration within Scandinavia originating in the east and becoming widespread to the west 
and south, end quote. And when we look at ancient and modern distributions of haplogroup I1, this makes perfect sense. Now I know that modern distributions are not always indicative of subclade origins, and I even made a video about this, but I do find it quite fascinating that as of March 25th, 2024, out of the 5,230 Y chromosome testers in the Family Tree DNA database that claim Sweden for their earliest known patchy country of origin, 44.6% of them tested positive for haplogroup I1. Furthermore, the oldest ancient DNA evidence we have thus far for haplogroup I1 comes from Västergötland, Sweden with Mr. Falkoping 220. The following map of Sweden shows the location of Falkoping between major lakes Vanern and Vatern. He was mentioned earlier this year in the study, 100 ancient genomes show repeated population turnovers in Neolithic Denmark. More evidence for this possible Sweden genesis for haplogroup I1 with grandchild branch IY11204, which has over 80% of its modern testers claiming either Sweden or Finland for their earliest known patchy little country of origin. We also have ancient DNA sample Oslo 9 dating to the late Neolithic from Skane, Sweden, also positive for this branch. He was mentioned in the 2019 study, the genomic ancestry of the Scandinavian battle axe culture people and their relation to the broader corded wear horizon. What's really interesting about OLL009 and other ancient haplogroup I1 samples from the late Neolithic and the Bronze Age is that they have a majority of step autosomal DNA, which in the following graphic is represented by green. So prior to showing up in the archaeological record, it appears that Mr. I1's patrial descendants were already well admixed with steppe influenced peoples such as the quarter wear culture. Now, where exactly did this contact between the two groups take place? To further quote the preprint, quote, moreover, the non-local hunter-gatherer ancestry of this East Scandinavian cluster is indicative of a cross-Baltic maritime rather than a Southern Scandinavian land-based entry, end quote. Maybe Mr. I-1 himself or his patrilineal forefathers originally came from the Baltic states, but I believe that all of the patrilineal differentiation that occurred in IDF-29's child branches and grandchild branches over centuries must have occurred somewhere else. Maybe Mr. I-1's patrilineal descendants spent several centuries on an island in the Baltic Sea prior to entering mainland Sweden. Haplogroup I-1 could have flourished on this island and all of that patrilineal differentiation that occurred over centuries could have been contained within that region of the island. So a few centuries later, when the patrilineal descendants of Mr. I-1 decided to enter mainland Sweden, they could have done it together, bringing all that haplotree branching with them.